Hi, I'm Dan with Fresh Point, and I wanted to take a few minutes and talk to you about the basics of tropical fruit. You know, I'm sitting here with all this beautiful fruit, and man, does it smell wonderful. That's the great thing about tropical fruits. When they're ripe, the nose tells you all you need to know. So let's start with pineapples. How do you know if you're picking the ripest, best pineapple? Well, you might think the shell color tells you, and it really doesn't. Fully ripe, the pineapples can have a full green color. Certain varieties will be golden. So how do you know? Just smell the cut end, and it's gonna have a rich tropical aroma. It's gonna smell like you imagine a pineapple smelling. When they first brought the gold shell pineapple to market, they were fully gold. The problem was the varieties didn't hold up in transit very well. The flesh was very soft. Through selective breeding and different agricultural processes, They've got that ripening down to where even when they're green, the flesh is going to be gold on the inside and fully ripe. The old kitchen legend was that you could pluck the center leaves out of the pineapple, and if they released easily, they would be ripe. That's really not the case. One interesting thing about pineapple, they're the only edible bromeliad. They have an enzyme known as bromelain. It's a meat tenderizer or a protein inhibitor. So when you cut and core your pineapple, save those cores and grind them up makes a great meat tenderizer, and you can minimize your food waste. Mangoes come in a variety of shapes, sizes, and colors. Again, don't go by the color to determine how ripe it is. We have two different varieties of mangoes to show today. Both are ripe, but they may not be ready to eat. To come to market, they have to be on the firm side. So how do you know? Again, take it. You can smell the stem end. It should have a rich tropical aroma or you can apply gentle pressure. If it yields to that, you know it's ripe and ready to go. So how do you get it there? Well, just leave them out and let them get a little warm. Once they start breaking and ripening, then put them in your cooler and it'll slow it down and extend that shelf life. You can also take a ripe mango, dice it, and freeze it for up to six months so you can extend that, the use of that. Papayas, there are two main varieties of papayas. There's the smaller Hawaiian papaya, which is typically used in its fully ready to eat ripe state. And then there's the Mexican papaya, which is used green in a papaya slaw in Southeast Asia or can be allowed to ripen. The differences are pretty stark besides the size. When green, the Mexican papaya will have a white ivory flesh and the seeds will be immature and white. The Hawaiian cultivar is always gonna be orange with the seeds black. When you cut these and scoop the seeds, save those seeds dry them out, it makes a great seasoning. Papayas can also be used as a meat tenderizer. The enzyme they contain is called papain. So just take some ugly papayas you may have had laying around that you had a little too long, a little too ripe, puree them up and use them as a tropical meat tenderizer. They're great on short ribs, slow braise, and they turn out perfect. Last but certainly not least are plantains. And while they're related to bananas and even look like bananas, they're definitely not bananas. You really need to cook these. You can certainly eat them raw, they're not gonna hurt you, but it's like biting into a raw potato. It's gonna be very starchy and it's gonna probably dry your mouth out. The great thing about plantains is you really use them at any stage of ripeness. They do have some perceptible sweetness when fully ripe, but you still need to cook them. In the green state, they're gonna be the firmest and hardest to peel, and they're gonna have the most starch content. As they ripen, they're gonna go yellow, and then they're gonna eventually turn full black at a stage known as Maduro. This is when the sugars are at their deepest and most concentrated, and they will have a residual, noticeable sweetness when cooked. So how do you store your tropical fruits? Well, you wanna keep them warm and dry, just like the climates they grow in. Keep them in the warmest part of your walk-in and enjoy them throughout the year. I'm Dan with Fresh Point, and that was the basics of tropicals.